Não é tempo técnico, mas é intervalo aqui no podcast. Já imaginou se seu time tivesse um seguro para não perder nunca? Pois é, isso não existe. Mas com a Zurich Seguros, quem não perde nunca é você. Na Zurich Seguros, os planos se adequam às suas necessidades em qualquer momento da sua vida. Seja seguro de auto, residência, vida e muito mais. Diferente de alguns times, na Zurich Seguros você pode confiar. Para saber mais, acesse zurich.com.br ou consulte seu corretor. You're listening to After Law, broadcasting from the beautiful South Berlin, except no sound. Hello, dear listeners. Welcome to Achtung Millwall. My name is Nick Hart. You are listening to the number one Millwall podcast. We speak in the aftermath of that one-all draw yesterday, 12.30 kickoff, Saturday, 30th of November, at the Kassam Stadium, one of the most um, soulless stadiums, I think, going in the Football League, the three-sided wonder, of course. A one-all draw thanks to a late equaliser by Oxford uh, on the 85th minute. Time and space given for the 19 to... Hit the top right-hand corner. Very poor defending, I thought, after Mill took the lead in the first half. Listeners, who'd be a football manager? Neil Harris booed at the end of that one-all draw. Um, on the back of a nine-game unbeaten run, including wins over top six contenders, Burnley and Leeds, plus a draw, um, a fighting draw, I thought, against Sunderland, um, leaving us in ninth position. But uh, his thanks for... Uh, some wayward choices. Let's have a look at the team yesterday. Um, Jensen in goal, back line, makeshift back line really with Hutchinson and Tanganga in the middle, Hutchinson being the makeshift element of course. Leonard and Brian either side of them. In front of them the defensive two of Jules Savile, Casper Denor. The attacking three, George Honeyman, questionable choices uh, listeners, maybe that was part of that reaction at the end of the game. We'll, we'll be speaking later in this show with Matt Webb who was there yesterday. Uh, Honeyman, Essay and Aziz, who I thought did did well yesterday. And up front, uh, Neil Harris's choice of Josh Coburn. Um, a strange game, really. It was, like I said already, I always find the Oxford uh, Stadium absolutely soulless. It's a, in a difficult position in Oxford, miles from anywhere, it seems. Um, public transport, not easy. Driving's not easy when you, when you go there. I watched it on Sky Television, I will confess to you, up front and early. Um... Difficult afternoon generally on the back of that that midweek debacle at, at Portsmouth where the game was postponed at the last minute thanks to a floodlight failure. Um, and it, the day didn't really get any easier with that second minute yellow card for, for um, Jeff Tanganga, who I thought was my man of the match yesterday, dear listeners. For that reason alone, he spent you know 90 odd minutes on a yellow card defending well and, and leading a back line that... Um, uh, with Hutchinson's clearly um, not, you know, not one hundred percent fit himself at the moment. Uh, Jake Cooper out injured now, so to manage that on a yellow card, I think was quite a tribute to his, um, you know, his skills of playing. Unfortunately, I think I, did, I read somewhere that that yellow card knocks him out of our next game, which will be at uh, home to Coventry next week. So. That's a blow. Um, but the first half, I thought, was a fairly mundane affair, really. Um, there was a shot, a long-range shot in the 13th minute from the Oxford wing, I've got noted here. Uh, saved, easy save for Jensen. A really good save following a poor ball by Joe Bryan. Loose ball in midfield. Uh, opinion varies on Joe Bryan, dear listeners. Go on online, you'll find all sorts of views and opinions. But a loose ball from Bryan allowed the... Uh, forward to, to break forward and his shot was on target it was well saved by Jens that was a, a goal saving shot on 17 17 minutes uh, at the, the 20 minute mark I thought we were looking really scrappy and, and um, neither side really was dominating and it was an out of self inflicted error that allowed that, that shot for Oxford and a, and a tremendous save by by uh, by Jensen. But gradually as the half wore on, I actually think we started to claw our way into the game. We started to create chances. Aziz, um, you know, in 33rd minute, had, a, had a, um, a good a good moment. And there were one or two flashes. Um, 40 of minutes a standout. 40 of minutes, fantastic Aziz run. I've got noted in and, and crossed into the, into the danger zone, cleared inside the six-yard box. Leading, culminating in the 43rd minute goal. So we'd actually clawed our way back from a fairly um, frigid start, listeners, shall we say. Um, 
and we were actually by the end of the half we were looking better and it was a good goal it was a corner in from the left side uh, met at the far post by Jeff Tanganga headed in for 1-0 and um, we even had the, the commentators on Sky comparing us at that point with Atletico Madrid. That was an actual line used by the commentator that, um, that I don't really follow Atletico, so I'm guessing they're very difficult to beat once they go in front because that was the, the, the point of the, um, you know, of the conversation. Um, so, yeah, half-time, 1-0. And I would have backed us to have pressed on and, and won that. Unfortunately, however... Josh Coburn, who was in a physical battle, has been in a physical battle the last few games, leading the line up front in that one one man striker role. Um, he went off injured at half time, replaced controversially. Controversially, I think this may lead us to the Neil Harris booing at the end of, of, of the match by Tom Bradshaw, who didn't really do much. I mean, you know, Brad as will bring you effort and and um, you know and, and, and maximum kind of. Uh, energy output, shall we put it, but not an awful lot in the way of quality. Um, so it's a strange choice, strange choice, especially with um, Mihailo Ivanovic, our two million euro striker sitting on the bench. Um, second half, large chunks of not very much to report, in all honesty, listeners, until um, Hutchinson left the field. I mean, uh, Bradshaw, incidentally, Bradshaw's playing with strapping on his leg, so he's not 100%, so why is... Langstaff not coming in, I don't know. That will be, I'm sure, a point of conversation in this in this show. Um, but Hutchinson left the field in the 78th minute, um, pulled up cramp, I understand, listening to, to Neil Harris after the game, replaced um, by, by Murray Wallace in the central defending role. And in all honesty, I thought it was Murray Wallace's uh, error, or lack of, lack of pace that allowed time and space, the freedom of the city of Oxford for the 19 or 85 minutes to hit the top right ankle. A really nice finish, but with time and space and poor defending in front of him to, to pick his spot, Jensen unable to do anything to prevent the equaliser going in. And we finished with Oxford pressing forward without any real clear-cut chances, I thought, listeners. Um, you know, pressing for a win. A 90th minute substitution of uh, Femi Aziz, who did well, um, contender for for a man of the match. I personally will go with Tanganga, but Aziz did well yesterday. Replaced by Langstaff. What, uh, uh, this, these will be points of conversation I'm going to pick up very, very shortly with Matt Webb, dear listeners. Um, and the game finished one each. Um, Depth for squad, I've got noted here, a problem, especially in central defence. Now, man, man of the match was Tanganga. Um, but a strong sense of, of uh, two points let away and the lack of depth in the squad becoming um, apparent. I've picked out a few a few um, post-match comments on, on Twitter, on X, I should call one from Danny Baker. He says he's been brooding on the Millwall result all day. We must learn to kill off games or just change our name to Millwall 1. Um, Harris has to trust his new fools. This is the point that I, I picked up on. Uh, he's got to trust his new forwards. Bradshaw no more. We are a tough side to beat, but always playing with one arm, time behind our back, up front. Um, TMP's Omer says it's the first time he's seen some of the away end turn so quickly. I had, I'm not sure where I stand on this. I mean, booing at the end of a one-all draw at Oxford. I'm going to get Matt's um, thoughts very, very shortly, but booing... Neil Harris, on the back end of that nine-game win, winning run, I've mentioned that already. Some of the victims we've, we've seen off in that, in that nine-game run are, are, are major names in championship terms. So I'm not sure about that, listeners. Um, I get the frustration. I do get the frustration. And I don't really understand why we're not seeing as much of Ivanovic and Langstaff as I'm sure we would all hope. Neil Harris is... Reply would almost certainly be like Gary Rowett before him, but it'll be based on what he sees in training. Um, and he does tend to favour his old trusties, his old lags, his old sweats, doesn't he? Um, Honest Millwall says, I'll try and back Bomber as much as possible, but that draw was on him. Um, they were League One level. I didn't think they were that bad, Honest. They weren't League One, they're League One stadium in some ways, but I thought they played some some football um, at times without really having a cutting edge. We should have gone for it, he says. You don't have to bring Bradders on when you've got Langstaff, Mihailo and DiMarco on the bench. Yeah, poor result, point or not. Um, one more before we go over to 
uh, to speak with Matt. Um, first half, this is from Jack. The first half, we should have been out of sight. Bringing Bradders on for Coburn was literally mind blowing, says Jack Millwall. And it completely ruined all momentum. Yes, it did. And that is a point of criticism. But as Jack goes on to say, that is on Harris, that decision. But imagine booing Neil Harris after nine games unbeaten. I don't know what some people expect. What do some people expect, dear listeners? Um, I'm sure it might enrage some people to, you know, to think that we've we've let two points go. But really, I mean, if, if you'd have said to me, at the start of the morning, um, we'll get a one-all draw at Oxford this afternoon. You probably wouldn't be unhappy with that. I get that you've got yourself into a winning position and there were chances, especially in the first half, to get that second goal ahead. I think Harris referred to that in his post-match comments. But booing your manager with ninth position, we're still a few points shy of the playoff slots. I don't get it. Generally, I don't get it. Um, I wasn't there, so maybe... Um, that would be the repost back to myself. But there we are. That's my match report and a few comments from Twitter. We're going to uh, take a very short uh, break now and then we'll be back after the, the jingle with Matt Webb. Achtung, Mailball. So regular. Become a show regular. Matt Webb, how are you, mate? Yes, very good, mate. Um, nice to be called a regular. That's uh, sort of like an achievement <laughs> in itself, but... Uh, very good, mate. Um, you know, yeah. enjoying a nice Sunday morning. Well, well done for going yesterday to Oxford United. I, I was just saying um, before we spoke, Matt, um, I, I always find Oxford one of the most soulless, difficult grounds to get with. I went there a few years ago back in, in League One and I watched yesterday on the telly for that reason because I thought, I, I don't know if I could face the journey there. It's in the middle of nowhere, mate, isn't it? I could not agree with you more, mate. It, I Yes, the atmosphere... I mean, except with the exception of the Millwall fans, was uh, somewhat lacklustre. Um, yeah. And the journey, if you're not driving or you're not going by the t- uh, supporters' coach, that is one hell of a an experience. That's for certain. Uh, getting there by by train. Um, yeah. I mean, you you go into Oxford. It's lovely, picturesque, and historical. Uh, city, and then you jump, you jump on a bus to the Kassam, and then you know, you're on a. It looks like you're on a set of Brookside. So it's um, and then you yeah. get off the bus, and then you got to walk towards the ground. So no, it was a, it was an experience to go that way. Um, I think next time I will go, will be probably driving it next time. But uh, I know for where they are relocating stadiums in the next uh, two years, as some of the uh, Oxford yeah. yeah, and apparently, and apparently, it's going to be a lot easier to get to by train. So we'll wait and see on crossed. that. Fingers crossed on that front. I mean, I, I watched it on TV on the Sky uh, feed, and it, um, you know, the atmosphere obviously twelve thirty start. We're coming off the back of that debacle that you went to in in midweek down at, at, at Portsmouth. Um, <clears throat> so not an easy easy situation for Millwall. Um, I thought we, you know, the first half, I thought we looked a bit scrappy to start off with Matt yesterday, um, but we did claw our way into it as the first half wore along. We had some good chances and then, of course, the goal just before half time. But I think as that half wore along, there was an, an error by um, Brian that allowed a shot on goal, well saved by Jensen. But after that, it was largely us for the remainder of the first half. I thought by the end of it, obviously leading at half time, we were in the driving seat there at, at that point, mate. Yeah, I mean, we were the better team in that first half, without shadow of a doubt, mate. And um, the um, yeah, we it was as I say it was a scrappy start. And then I think when you when you when you come to Oxford, when you know it's lower half of the table, um, getting spanked six and three in their last two games, six at home as well, especially yeah, against yeah, the Borough, yeah. you've got you've got to you 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 do have sort of like a, a weight of expectation on the team to to deliver and uh, yeah it was a very slow scrappy start I thought here we go we started playing high balls in, and I just thought well this is going to be one of them sort of classic we're going to we're going to this ground and potentially we could slip up here um, yeah. but but we started playing football Nick and that's 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 important we got we did start playing football we did um, and we and we and we got into the game and and I say the stats at half time were like we obviously had nine shots uh, at the goal, um, yeah. I know on target it was low, but sixty about sixty to sixty five percent possession. Now we as Millwall don't ever ever have sixty to sixty five percent possession 
<laughs> at no, all, Lord. Not, not, no. not that we recall, but um, no. But yeah, no, we started playing football. We we absolutely did deserve the goal. Apparently, Oxford had never conceded from set pieces before today, uh, before yesterday even. Um, but yeah, no, we 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 were we, we deserved to go in front. And yeah, you made the the, the um, point about Brian Brian slip up or mi- misplaced pass, which yeah, allowed the lads yeah. come in. I mean, great save by Jensen. He came out again. Another strong game by the boy. Really pleased with him. Um, but. Yeah, apart from that, that's all that Oxford had to show. And I hope, I mean, that 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 that, that says, though, that, that for me at half times gave me the sense of confidence to say, well, do you know what? They are awful. You know, it feels like you can score a goal against them and you can easily pack in another two or three. Yeah, no, 100%. Scored by Tanganga, my man of the match yesterday, incidentally. Man, I don't know if you'd agree with that. He was on a yellow card from almost, the, I think it was the second minute, he had a yellow shown to him, which was very harsh, but to play the whole game uh, and be the goal scorer and be the leading role in defence, I thought made him man of the match. Would you Would you take Tanganga overall? Or, or, I, mean, I thought Aziz did okay as well, Matt. Yeah, well, Tanganga for me was man of the match. Um, hard to, to, be, to be honest, mate, I don't think there was much competition within no. the team uh, to, no. for that. Uh, but you're right. I mean, he gets a uh, and it was a, a, a silly booking. Um, uh, where it was, I mean, it was never a booking by a country miles right in front of us. But to have that level of discipline to ensure that you can control your time, time your tackles and and and, and marshal the defence on a yellow after two minutes. Yeah, some tribute. Is, 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 well, that just shows the quality of of Jaffa Tanganga at the end of the day, Nick. And that's where I keep we keep on saying is that that's where we need. The rest of our that's where the this team needs to be is like at that level to yeah. be challenging for the for the for the top six. But no, he was brilliant. Uh, yeah, say so shout to Jensen for uh, the save in the first half. And he, as I say, I mean, he had no. I don't think he had any uh, any uh, hope with that goal. It was a great strike. But apart from that, as these uh, shouts was these, he was exciting. Yeah. Um, but 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 yeah, really truthfully, mate, that 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 is that was it. I mean, Coburn obviously replaced at half-time controversially and might be the good time to discuss some of the team choices and substitution choices, Matt, because um, Tom Bradshaw came in at half-time for uh, Josh Coburn up front. I think Coburn took a knock in the first half. The camera zoomed in on him. He seemed to be, you know, kind of slightly limping away. So um, that hence the replacement at half-time. A lot of talk online about the choice of Bradshaw coming in um, for Coburn. And, you know, I, I actually don't mind Tom Bradshaw. He, he gives you what he gives you. Um, but he was very ineffective, I thought, yesterday, because we, we, the, the ball weren't, wasn't sticking going forwards anymore, Matt, and that, that really invited Oxford on to us. Although, in fairness, you know, we were largely in control in the second half. They didn't really have much in the way of... Um, they had a lot of the ball, but they didn't... More of the ball, but they didn't seem to do anything with it in that second half up until... The equaliser. Um, but the whole Tom Bradshaw controversy, I, I, I don't know. Where, where do you stand on Tom Bradshaw or the choices of Langstaff and, and, and Ivanovic? I don't understand Bomber's thinking sometimes, do you? Well, I think first and foremost, I think the fans let him know at the end of the game what they felt about that substitution. Uh, we'll probably yes. touch, touch on that a little <laughs> bit later. But for, for me... Um, we, we didn't see him limping off uh, for a I mean, we was right in the corner, so uh, yeah. we, we didn't we didn't see him limp off. But so then, obviously, when we see the substitution at half time, we've automatically assumed this is a la Stoke game where you know we're just going to hold back and close and, up, and pray, yeah. pray, pray for a one nil win. Which, as I said, from the first half, that was that was very that that does seem quite infuriating because, as you said, we were the dominant team. And Oxford, they were there to be absolutely well. We could at least bag another two or three if we carried on with the same momentum. Um, so that that for us was the was the uh, was the frustration uh, behind it. Yeah. My my views on Bradshaw coming on. I, I, I honestly, yeah, again, it's it's, it's a similar thing. He's he's done well for us, sort of speech, in my opinion, Nick. I, he's he's done well, but mm. we got realised is that we. Coburn is quality. Uh, he's young. He's quality, and he's got a great future ahead of him if he stays fit. 
but we've also got... He stays with us, well, not ours. Yeah, yeah, that is true, yeah. Never fall in love with the low player, Nick, come on. I interrupted you, sorry, yeah. (laughs) Yeah, no, that's fine. But we have got quality on that bench. We had, uh, you know, we've got a lad who we've paid a record fee. Okay, he's 19, but he's made his Serbia debut during the the, the international break. He was wanted by not just us, but other clubs, I don't know whether, around around Europe. And... um, and he's not getting a sniff. So, you know, and if you wanted to do like for like with big man up top who's got a bit of sank on his feet, then for me, the, the, the like for like would have should have been Ivanovic. And to be fair, I think he would have thriv- he would have thrived in yesterday's game with a sort of defence that isn't your uh, Leeds United's, isn't your Burnley's, isn't your Sunderland's. You know, who have got less in quality. And that's no disrespect to, to Oxford, but I think, you know, you've got they, – they are – they are where they are because of, yeah. of the amount of goals they conceded. So, you know, that that for me, I would have thought would have been a more sensible um, substitution just, just to maintain that momentum. But instead he put Bradshaw, uh, Bradshaw on who, again, in, in the game yesterday, he had 45 minutes, but he got out sprinted by, I think it was Will Volk, who played the whole not, entire 90. Um, and you just yeah. think, what's what's the purpose? What's, what, what is he bringing to the team? Arguably, if you wanted Bradshaw, I would have tucked him in, in a 10. I'll put him behind the big man because it, it gives you that running, like what Honeyman does, but he also gives you that killer instinct of, well, a threat of goal, mm. uh, it, what, a num- what for me a number 10 should be. So I, I, thought, I, I, I honestly think Neil did have made a bit of a, a howler in terms of the, of, this, of the substitution yesterday. And like I said, I, I, think, I think there was a few... Few hundred mil wall that probably agrees with so so I read <laughs> so yeah. I read online. I mean, if it wasn't apparent, I think thinking about, I haven't seen any of it since. Um, but I think Coburn landed heavily towards the end of the first half in a challenge. Um, mm. Nothing in it; it just landed heavily. And I think after that, he was slightly limping away or hopping away. You know, I think that led to the, to the substitution. I, I don't get why. Your first reaction to take out Josh Coburn, who I do understand starting listeners, I do get that because he's got more championship experience. But at some point, you'd think uh, Mihailo Ivanovic, Matt, and I don't get the <clears throat> the instinctive go to Tom Bradshaw. I do think football managers generally, and it's not just a criticism of Neil Harris, but I think that managers generally, I'd include the likes of Gary Rowe and others before before uh, him. They do tend to favour their their um not their mates but their tried and trusted you know their 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 kind of old their old lags so to speak and I think there's a bit of that with Neil I think he's turned to Tom Bradshaw because he's known him he's used him many many times he he, he trusts him um, whereas I think the new kid uh, Mihailo I think it just seems a bit of a wild card I don't know if that makes sense well uh, well I also I think this sparks a debate about who's who, which players are are coming into the club and by who. If, yeah. you, if you understand, yeah. like the soap, the soap that, opera, yeah, 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 is this the Gallon signing? Is this the Harris signing? It's yeah, it brings back that sort of saga. Um, I can't, I can't imagine, and we might touch on it a little bit later. I can't imagine Gallon calling in for Sean Hutchison to return in the summer. I think that must have been a call from Neil, from yeah. from from my from my opinion. But um, no, uh, yeah, you're right. The managers always have their tried and trusted, um, but. Yes, uh, Bradshaw is a a trusted uh, servant to to uh, to Mill and to Neil Harris, but you got to realise it's it's the it's time, you know, time moves on, and you know, legs start to like drop a bit, injuries are, are more frequent, pace is dropped by a yard or two, and you've got to start looking at the new crop of tried and trusted players, and and that's where I think that's where we are. We're we're a club that's. In a, like I say, we're in a situation where we'll go back to our old guard, our dad's army, so to speak, to get us out of, out of Stuck. But unfortunately, when you've got the level of quality in Ivanovic, Langstaff, I'll put him in this uh, yeah, equation. Yeah, we have not even mentioned in, Langstaff. Yeah, yeah, yeah. In, 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 in Maku, sitting yeah. on the bench, you've got to you you had to you had to put question marks over of the of the decision to. To bring him on, so you know, I, I, I said I get it. I, I mean, I'm not a manager myself, but I've been in the game uh, quite a, a 
for a number of years and, and it is and it it isn't a rarity this is a common thing with, with, yeah, with players. Yeah, no i agree you see it a lot you come away yeah you come away from me well you see <laughs> sam allardyce used to always take kevin nolan wherever he went with him so <laughs> you know it's but it's true you you have your you have your uh tried and trusted players but your unfortunately favorites. i don't yeah. But I think Neil has to understand that he's tried and trusted on now a level or two below what we've actually got at the moment. And I think it is time to roll the dice with the with the talent. Yeah, no, I would I would agree with that one hundred percent. And I think probably that was the motivation. I'm not, I can't speak for other people, but I'm gonna guess that was the motivation behind the reaction at the end of the game. But we'll, we'll come back to that. We're just talking about the old guard. Obviously, um Bradshaw came into the into, into the game yesterday, Matt, with strapping on his leg. He's not clearly not um fully um out of the woods from that injury that he was carrying. He's got strapping on his legs. But then, you know, we're talking about the old guard. Um, Hutchinson pulls up um, cramp, apparently, according to Neil Harris post-match in the 78th minute for Murray Wallace to come in. Um, you know, we could still be in nine, in uh, 2017 with these names, couldn't we? Um, seven years ago. Um, and, you know, I, I love Murray. I love his I love uh, the Murray Wallace story. I think it's fantastic. But to bring him in central defence, and maybe there's no one else, I don't know, Matt, but... Um, I, I personally, from what I could see of the goal, it looked like the guy was given time and space to pick his spot from the edge of the D and uh, he put it away well. And that was somewhere where I think Murray probably should have been on him faster and more instinctively. He just wasn't there. So that's that moment really turned the game round because that's that's two points gone down the, uh, what's the, it's the River Isis that runs through the River Thames, River Isis, and it runs through uh, Oxford. So that's two points gone down the River Isis, Thames. I'll hold so your words about Nick, my geography of Oxford. <laughs> I'll hold your it's words about It's, it's, the, it's my... the Thames. They oh, call right. it ISIS in the Oxford. And anyway, I don't, don't want to get involved in that. <laughs> <laughs> not, not a terrorist organisation, isn't it? <laughs> yeah. Um, but yeah, well, yeah. each well taken goal, well hit shot, but um, he's just given so much time and space, mate. Yeah, I mean, it was a, I mean, it was a well taken shot, and, and Jensen had no no chance really on that one. But uh, the clearance wasn't the greatest either. I think it was from Honeyman, who yeah. just did a, a, a out and hit and hope uh, clearance, which wasn't ideal. Um, and you but then it, we don't close it down. But it's the same with with the Sunderland game. We didn't close Connolly down from the. Um, from 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 the corner, so you know it's a it's a common thing that we we kind of are very static in our reaction to some of the ball outside the box. Expect because I think modern football now they expect players now just to try and walk the ball through. But you know the, the lad took a took a punt, he took a shot, and you know he found the the top right hand corner, which was a you know good yeah. goal really at the end of the day. But it was a a kick in the teeth, but. At that time, you would expect and you would hope that Millwall would have been sort of like home from home, really, for in terms of putting the game to bed, but just never happened, mate. Should have been. And um, we see Langstaff in the 90 minutes, 90th minute, with uh, I think it was four minutes added time, which is again another another um, point we've made already. Um, mm. Yellow card for Tanganga. I think that I read somewhere, and I haven't seen it confirmed that he's knocked out of the next game against Coventry. So we do have a, a sudden problem in central defence. I think you might we might need you in central defence, man, <laughs> next week. I don't know who else there is after Murray Wallace. <laughs> well, well, do you know what? I, I get that, but I mean, I think this is a sense. You just need to put faith in where's Harding now. You need to, and it's not not a case of well, he's by default a little bit now, but. He, he needs to put a little bit of faith in, in Wes Harding. If Hutchinson's only got cramp, that should be only a couple of days recovery. You know, he should be back on the pitch. But still, that's he he, he still won't be 100%. So, you know, Wes Harding needs to come into the, to, to the affray, in, in my opinion. Other than that, the only other option would be to have, throw Ryan Leonard into a centre-half. Central, I think he can yeah. Do it. Yeah, yeah, I think he'll do a really good job. And then you put Danny Mack into his natural right-back position. Right-back position, yeah. Um, yeah. And, and then and then you've got it there, but um, that's you know I, I mean personally I would I would have Ryan Lenny because the way he sort of the way he carries himself about as a defensive player and a leader absolutely absolutely one hundred percent he's really he's he's get he's getting better he's like a fine one he's getting better by age but again with and I've seen it on a couple of occasions this year and I'm not trying to be controversial but there have been a few players that have 
gone past him on that right right side. Um, yeah, no, I'll, which I'll say you the just same. think, yeah, which you think, you know what? You've got it up there, and you've got the technique of being an absolute fantastic defender. Right, let's see if we can slot you into that centre half position now, because you won't have to worry about the the speed of the uh, the left wingers against you. Um, so, I would personally give. I'll give Leonard a, a throw, especially if we against Coventry, you're going to have the uh, Ellis Sims as an absolute mountain, or you've got Hadji Hadji Wright, who's mm. quick as well. But yeah. you know, you, you don't you don't have to be the fastest in centre off, but you need to have one of the hell of a footballing brain to be um, to be in that position. And I think he's he's got the capabilities of doing that. But it's uh, yeah, it'll be a, a bit a bit of a uh, an interesting. Um, Team selection, so to speak. I mean, you could end up having Hutchinson and Wallace as your back two on 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 Saturday, and I wouldn't be surprised if that did happen. Um, but yeah, we we'll, we'll have to wait and see on that one. <laughs> Let's touch on the reaction at the end of the game. I mean, obviously, um, a lot of frustration all around. Everyone viewing the game, everyone at the game, would have been frustrated to see that that three points turn into one so so poorly. Um, Neil Harris seemed to be quite, uh, from what I read, was upset by the booing. And I, I, I kind of get that. Um, you know, it, it's obviously in the moment, heat of the moment, maybe people react, Matt. But um, I don't like booing your own manager. Not when we're sitting ninth in the table on the back end of a nine-game un, unbeaten run. We've we've seen off Burnley and Leeds and, and drawn with Sunderland in that run. It's It strikes me as a little bit of an overreaction. How did you, how did you see it? How did you find it yesterday? Well, I think this is the bit where I might be a little bit controversial, Nick. But I, yeah. I see, it for, I see it from both ends, and I don't think the boom was directly aimed at Neil. I, oh. I, I see it as in, I think he's the booing of the decisions that were made in that game. Um, oh, yeah. I understand. Yeah, I, I, I think the fans had, as I said, they come to Oxford with with them losing six at home and three away, so they considered nine goals in two games. So they they come to Oxford with a weight of expectation, especially after how we finished against Sunderland. So to have that mindset in 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 you before you get to the game, you'd want to thought right. Well, let's go at them. First half, as I said, we had nine shots at the goal. Okay, there weren't that many on target, but with this fact that we scored right at the end of half time, which is can be a right. Killer. If you yeah, if you just yeah. if you're if you're yeah. going in nil nil, you've got to change your time. You've got to change how you approach the second half. When you go one nil up with like just before half time, it does it does change your half time team talk to a lesser extent. And I think what most those fans that want who were pretty frustrated probably wanted Mill to come out again and just again just go again, go again yeah, and yeah, go for yeah. go for a, a two nil a three nil. Um, hence why. I think they were frustrated when Bradshaw came on. And also, I think they were frustrated why um, Honeyman stayed on and you couldn't put another, another another striker on to really kill the game off. And also, I think they were frustrated when uh, he took Aziz off as well. So I, I can understand their frustrations from that. And I, and I think sometimes what what we don't hear from, from Neil is that he, he's got to remember he's a human just as much as we are. So we wouldn't like it if Andrew does us. Booed, booed, no, no, booed no, us. no, no. But you've also got to understand that if you've made, do you? I, did, did you think? I think he made a mistake. I think he made a mistake. But own it. No, if you, if we, we'll praise you. Left, we'll praise you, or the fans will praise him and sing his name out all the time. But if you've made a tactical error in terms of substitutions and, and personnel, just I would personally just say, do you know what? It's on me. That was my fault. I'll own that one. I'm sorry, but we didn't lose. You, so it, that's sort of like where. I would have liked um, that to go, but no, I, I don't think that the fans were booing at directly at Neil. I think it was more. It was the decision making, the, the, yeah. the situation, yeah. and, and I think that's where he's got to understand not to take that to heart, but to think, well, well, why? What, what was, what was wrong there? And you know, I think, and that's why I think if they see it and they come to Oxford again, thinking, oh, we'll, we'll bag a couple, maybe a three against this really, really average Oxford team. You know yeah. they only won the playoffs last year, so and they haven't spent masses in in in, in the summer. Can let's you know let's let's not hold for a draw. We should be going. So I can and that's that's where I think that's where the uh, the reaction was at the end of the game. I think it was more frustration and how the game was 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 managed. I hear you, mate. 
Nice one. Mate, you've got a busy day, mate. I'm going to let you let you crack on. I really appreciate you taking time out to speak to me this morning. Much appreciated. No, that's fine. I'm just so happy that we've managed to see a game without any instance, whether it be medical <laughs> or no. electrical. No floodlights oh, needed. <laughs> no floodlights, no, no, no medical emergencies in block one. Honestly, I'm just I'm quite happy that I can manage to witness the entire game, mate. Well said. Big thank you, Matt Webb. We're going to be back after the uh, the messages with the voicemails, dear listeners. Stay tuned. Achtung, Milbal. Hello, Nick. It's Hassan here. Just thought I'd leave some thoughts and comments um, in regards to yesterday's 1 1 draw of Oxford. Uh, I've got to be honest with you, I'm going to contradict myself a little bit here because I only like to leave a voicemail um, with yourself. If I watch the game either in person or on the telly, I, I believe that your the point of view of a fan is only really, really justified if you've watched the whole game from start to finish. So I, I am going to contradict myself here a little bit, but I just got to get a few things off my um, chest, which I thought um, would, would uh, contribute to the show in that sense. Um, I can't help but look at the the lineup and the second half lineup as well. I'm going based on fan reaction and also just highlights. It, you know, let's address the elephant in the room. You know, Bradshaw, 32-year-old striker, has only been prolific once since he's been with us. Under Harris, funnily enough, he signed him in 2018. It was his signing, and he was only prolific two seasons ago. Apart from that, you know, never gets into double figures in terms of goals and return. I don't like to believe that he's got his favourites, Bomber, but you've got to help but wonder what on earth is going on in that back room. Um, to choose Bradshaw to to get you further into the game um, over the likes of Langstaff and Ivanovic, to me, it beggars belief. Um, I can only think there's there's I mean it, it, we could be put we could be putting two and two together and making ten, but. It, it just feels like the reason why he chose Bradshaw to run the second half as opposed to Langstaff, Ivanovic or even Amaku is because he's, he's Harris's boy. You know, it was his signing back in the day of when the manager signed players. Langstaff and Ivanovic, no matter which way you look at it, Harris didn't sign those players. He may have been aware that the club was signing them, but he didn't personally say, yeah, I want him or I want that guy. I, I'm, I got a horrible feeling that he's he, again I don't know you know we don't know what happens at the training ground during the week we can only assume and make assumptions and from fact, from my point of view I'm just making the assumption that he trusts Bradshaw more than anyone else uh, at this moment in time um, because he knows him he signed him he didn't sign the other two and I think that's, that's a, such a shame because you know I'm a big Harris fan always Harris in He's nothing but a club legend for me, no matter what he does. You know, he's still a legend for me. But at the end of the day, you know, everyone is open to criticism. And uh, I believe he dropped the massive clangor yesterday. That game was there for the taking. Oxford's awful team, home and away. I think last week they shipped six at home against Middlesbrough, who fair enough are a good side. But for us to go there and by all accounts play shit, get one goal, um, and then and hardly tested their keeper at all. I think it's quite sad. Uh, we've got all this talent. And I I, I, I don't believe any other team. Well, we're, we're, we can consider ourselves at the moment a top-half team. I really don't see any other team choosing a 32-year-old striker just come back from injury over a, a pacey um, wide man like Imaku, a, a striker like Langstaff, who scored tons of goals. He, I bear in mind he was in the conference in League 2. But he knows where the net is. You spent three million euros or pounds, whatever it is, on an up-and-coming striker who's who's got a good physical presence and is awkward to deal with. I mean, he comes from that Mitrovic line of Serbian strikers, doesn't he? Um, and I don't see any other team in that top half choosing a 32-year-old lightweight striker who can't hold the ball, can't trap the ball, can't jump. At best, he's good at closing down. And, you know, but he's got no striking instinct at all. Um, he's he's baffling. And to bring Langstaff on, Langstaff on, I think it was 91 minutes. It's a fucking joke, really. Um, you know, 
I'm still positive. We're still nine games unbeaten. Amazing run to be on. But it's just, it's frustrating, you know, because, you know, games like that are there for the take. It's all well and good beating the Leeds and the Burnleys of this world at home, right? But you've got to back it up against the shit teams as well. And the, the funny thing about it, we knew what Harris was going to do from Wednesday night. It was a, a he's not even a blessing in disguise because he chose Wallace and um, Bradshaw at the start against Pompey. Obviously, it got cancelled, got abandoned. Um, but it just goes to show what his thought process was. It, as soon as he could, he was going to get Bradshaw back in that starting 11, which is a joke for me. This unbeaten run has happened not because Bradshaw has been, because we missed Bradshaw. We got this unbeaten run in, in spite of Bradshaw. Uh, I don't want to make this, you know, a hate, um, a hate voicemail on him. It's not his fault, but if you want to play him, stick him up front with a fucking big man. You know, you got Kobe, you got Ivanovic. Put, you know, Kobe was like a fucking sick note to me. He's injured again by the looks of it. Ivanovic alongside, let Ivanovic do the donkey work, and let Bradshaw pick up off the um, loose balls. Don't put him up front with his fucking own. It don't work. You know, I, I think I said this before, another um, voicemail. Bournemouth scored 100 plus goals for us, not playing up front on his own. He always had a fucking strike partner, you know? And as I said, I, I, I'm still looking, I'm still positive. We're still nine games unbeaten and all that. But, you know, I, I feel like we threw away um, we threw away two points there. It was a winnable game. And now we've got Coventry next week. I think we've got no Tanganga. I've got a horrible feeling he's suspended. We've got no... We've got no Recognised centre, well, real fit centre backs. Hutchison, he's only got 45 minutes in him by the looks of it. He went off again yesterday. Murray Wallace hasn't kicked the ball. He came on yesterday. I heard, he, you know, he was okay. But uh, we're in the fuck, you know, it's, it's funny because we've got more problems at the back than we are going forward. We've got so much choice in the forward lines that it's gone the other way now. Defensively, we're fucked. And do you know what? It's now 1st of December. And we've got a lot of games in a short amount of time. I, I think, you know what? Don't be surprised if we go into the new year and look at the bottom half of the table. Because I, I just don't see how we're going to be defensively solid. You know, we make, you know, we can't score more than one goal by the looks of it. Um, I don't know. You know, I, I worry slightly. Maybe I shouldn't. But facts are facts. Um, again, Honeyman's coming for a lot of stick. I've I got, I got to go. I've got to join that crowd as well because... He's a number 10 who doesn't contribute to goals or assists. Hopeless. His only assist was of, of, of late was the one against Plymouth uh, for Romain Eze. You know, again, you've got Imaku, you've got Eze, who's now... Um, I mean, it's not Eze. Aziz and Eze, but Aziz is now starting to show what he can do. You know, such talent there. And it's like, come on, let them loose. What more is... I was wrong with him recently. He's gone off the boil. He's gone back to his old ways. Um... I don't know. I don't know how he's gone so sour. Apparently, a lot of fans were booing at the end of the game. I think that's more our frustration than anything. And Harris sort of alluded to it a little bit. But I'm sorry. Out with the old, in with the new. He's got to be. I'm sorry. You know, Bradshaw. He is no Lee Gregory. He is no Steve Morrison, right? Who was a little bit older. You know, he could get you a goal. When Bradshaw comes off the bench, I don't believe. Yeah, we're going to get a goal now. I'm sorry. You know, he's sort of someone you you run the clock down if you're defending the lead not to extend the lead I know we're winding up at half time but th- that's always a fragile scoreline you know we could, we could we could have gone for it a bit better than that if you ask me but hey ho onwards and upwards cheers mate big thank you Hessain um, interesting comments there I think we're probably going to hear similar comments some uh, even so we've heard similar comments across this show already Hessain but um, yeah I mean I I don't actually have an answer to your question. I can only presume that we saw Bradshaw at half time because A, we were a goal ahead. Um, B, there's a football manager's way of thinking that says you shut up shop, close the uh, door, park the bus, whatever you know cliche you want to use, listeners, and you see the game out. Now, I'm going to guess that um, you're, you're kind of uh, Tom Bradshaw and his pomp will give you maximum effort running tackling from the front um pressing everything that neil harris likes and and you know when it's effective we like um but he's, he was clearly to me he doesn't look 100 percent fit um when he came into the game i was watching it on telly as i've said already on the show listeners but he had strapping on his leg now he, he might be deemed fit enough to 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 play a half i don't know 
but um, we became very ineffective. I don't really know why um, taking out Josh Coburn, who I probably would have started um, because I think he is an effective battler up front, but certainly at half time he was he was crocked. I believe he landed heavily. Um, I haven't checked that, so correct me if I'm wrong, listeners. But um, why are we not bringing in Mihailo Ivanovic, who whenever he has taken the field for us has been, you know, has had an impact, if nothing else. Um, whether it is indeed this this soap, op- soap opera, as I call it, the the whole um, Gallon signings of Ivanovic and and to a lesser extent or, or to an extent, Macaulay Langstaff. Um, I don't know. I can't believe that's so. Can you? I hope it's not so. Um, equally, in my experience of the working world and human life generally, a big part of me nags at me that it is so, and that's 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 um, a poor state of affairs. If that is that you know these players are not being favoured because they aren't Neil Harris's pl- uh, players. I do believe, as I said to to um, to Matt earlier on in the show, that all football managers have their their blokes, their favourites, their 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 boys. Um, I think probably uh, Jules Savile falls falls into that um, category at times. Although I think he probably delivers more often than, for example, Jules Honeyman, who, who um, Hassan just mentioned there. Um, I don't know. I, I thought in in towards the end of the first half, listeners, um, I wouldn't say we were. You know, flowing like like Barcelona or something, but we were looking all right. I thought we would certainly had a grip on the game. We got a lead. We were having chances, and with a straightforward replacement of um, Coburn, if he's if he's taken a knock, bring Ivanovic, and I would have expected us to carry on in 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 the same way. Um, so I don't really understand Neil Harris's fa- uh, thinking there. Um, I think it was Matt um, earlier on said, "Own that, own that decision. Say you're sorry when you're sorry." Well. <laughs> Uh, Elton John wrote a song about that, didn't he? He says, sorry is the hardest word. And I think, unfortunately, in this life generally, especially in football, it does indeed seem to be the hardest word. But I want to say a big thank you to Hassan there. Um, next up, we're going to listen to two messages, actually, from Bill Slack. Let's go over to Bill now. Hello, Nick. Um, Bill Slack. Um, I don't I don't just call in when I've got the ump. I promise you, that's, I know that's what it looks like, but I promise I don't. I... Um, it was interesting today, wasn't it? A um, bit of booing at the end, and I don't think uh, you know the, the 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 fans that went said he didn't look particularly impressed with it. Um, and on the one hand, I can see why what he's done for us over the last nine or ten months has been absolutely incredible, absolutely incredible. Um, you know, thank God for Neil Harris. Um, that being said, booing's pretty much the only way we can show a little bit of displeasure. Um, no one's going to run on the pitch and and have an autopsy on the game with him, are they? And stand and, and chat about why he did this and why he did that. Um, what I've learned as a football supporter over the years is sometimes I need I need to or we need to believe what's what's in front of us and acknowledge that what we're actually watching is a lack of judgment or a selection mistake. You know, you can quite often go. Well, he sees these players in training every week or, you know, all week. So he must know what he's doing. Um, he must be seeing something that we don't. There has to be some tactical plan um, that he's come up with that as mere football supporters, we can't understand. And sometimes that is the case. Um, you're a little bit like me. You don't really understand, you know, the eye press, the low block, the low block, the eye press, the triggering, um, the three five nine four two, and... Should we play Joe Edwards style or Neil Harris style or 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 functional Gary Rowett? You 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 just want to see us attack, have some decent football, and score a couple of goals. I think that's the level I watch football at. That being said, I've seen enough of Joe Bryan to know that he's not he's not what we need or deserve at, at left back. He should not be keeping. The best left back at the club is a right back. That's where we are at the moment. And the substitution at half time today with Tom Bradshaw coming up or coming on um, for Coburn, um, I don't think you'll find a Millwall supporter that could understand that. Um, Now, I think from Harris's point of view, he likes Bradshaw's 
work rate. He likes the pressing. He likes that first line of defence. He likes how he, he, he tries to close down and get in amongst it and runs the channels and it high energy and everything else. But what I think he's acknowledging when he brings Bradshaw on at 1-0, goals aren't his priority. Goals are, goals are not the priority for him because if goals were priority, you, you would categorically... Um, be playing Macaulay Langstaff in front of um, Bradshaw. And I don't think um, Langstaff's um, pressing and work rate is any less than Bradshaw's. He just feels safer having Bradshaw up front. Um, so all those supporters have gone to Oxford. They've seen Bradshaw and Brian. Then they've seen, I wouldn't call it a, cap a capitulation at, at half time, but it looked like we settled for the one nil the one nil win. Now, at the end of the first half, the supporters that went wouldn't have seen this because obviously I watched it on the telly. At the end of the first half, we had sixty three percent possession. By the end of the game, um, they finished with having fifty three possession, fifty three fifty three percent possession um, for the game. That's how that's how bad the sec the second half was for us, not keeping the ball. Um, we just seem to go to pieces. My final point, I've been right about two things since I've been calling into this. And one was Joe Edwards um, being an absolute disaster. I said it from the off. Um, I won't revisit on that. But I have been banging on um, since the start of last season about centre-halves. And, and how we have gone into this year um, with Tanganga, Cooper, Harding, um, and Wallace um, is not a good look in any way, shape or form. Because I said that if Tanganga or Cooper get injured, we've then got um, Hutchison coming in at the age of 32 or 33, um, who spent most of last year injured. Um, we re-signed him and he spent almost the entirety of this season injured. And now we've got Cooper and Tanganga out. And could well be in a position on, um, in our next game, of having Murray Wallace and Harding as a centre half pairing. And I actually worry about Harding less than I do Murray. God bless him, love him to bits and all that. But um, you know, he's got the acceleration of an oil tanker these days. You know, we could get ripped a new one with that back four. Um, so yeah, I know Harris won't appreciate getting booed. But by the same token, you're you you you're 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 doing something that is so clearly, obviously, not effective and just downright wrong. The only way that we can get that across to you, me old mate, is to fucking boot you and tell you that we we weren't happy with the performance. We're not booing your last nine or ten months. What we are basically saying to you is, why the fuck do I have to watch Brian at left back? And what the fucking hell is Tom Bradshaw doing running around up front when we've got a three million pound striker and a million pound striker sitting there thinking, what the fuck? Not forgetting the impact that Imaku had off the bench um, last week. Um, we've got a decent squad and, and he doesn't seem to be using it. That's why he got booed. I'll speak to you soon when we have another shit performance. Cheers, mate. Ta-da. Achtung, Mehlball. Um, I mean, certainly as far as the um, the booing is concerned, let's go back to that. Um, yeah, I mean, the second half, um, I, I didn't see, I saw the half-time statistic. I just turned it off at full time, so I didn't stick around to see what the percentage was. 63% possession down to 47 does... does um, send a bit of a message. The reason for that, in my opinion, is that when we had Coburn, who is a player that I quite rate, listeners, you know, um, I quite like him. I, I wouldn't uh, be against him starting or, or being a, a feature on, on rotation with um, with, with uh, Ivanovic. But of course, when, when you have our main target man, big boy, goes off the pitch, um, the ball doesn't stay forward. And unfortunately with uh, Tom Bradshaw, <clears throat> that's precisely what happened in the second half. I mean... A few the points have been made a few times across the show, and I, I think the chaps are all right, but Bill included selection errors and poor judgment by the manager. Um, invariably, in the world of football, it seems to me you don't admit your mistakes um, because to admit a mistake implies that you are flawed 
and the um, the kind of feral atmosphere of a football dressing room or the football scene generally is that where you see a weakness or you know the kind of scent of blood in the water like the shark you go after it maybe that's the reason why I don't know but I don't think Harris is alone in not being um, quick to admit a mistake or two um, so yeah I mean the, the booing is you're right Bill I mean also there is this truth and as much as I don't believe in booing our own team or you know um, that kind of reaction um, you have paid your money and Neil Harris is well paid I don't know what his deal is at the den he would be earning a lot more than the likes of me and you dear listener uh, I don't know how much you earn but um, you know he's been doing well for himself um, same as all the players that let that game get away from them for whatever reason um, so yeah I think you know the the, 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 uh, the terrorist voices are entitled to their moment and I don't think that it, it behoves any um you know any manager very well to have a dig back he did mention it in the post-match um conversation with max um very rarely is that a good thing um i don't know about this you know i'm, I'm, I'm still a little bit stuck on the whole ivanovich and langstaff not being his signings thing if that's really what it turns out to be then um i'm astounded dear listeners if that's what it turns out to be I'm going to play now a, couple, a few messages one after having have Rob Woodford, Mark Barnes, Glyn Horner and Joe Chats. Yes, a foursome, dear listeners. Yes, uh, Rob Woodford from Block 4, Nick. And um, yeah, I, I imagine a lot of your callers this weekend will be full of negativity about this result today. And the usual, you know, this team were for the taking... But I'll take a different stance because any draw away from home in the championship is a decent result. And to be perfectly honest, I would have taken that before the game. Now, we've come a long way since the Edwards experiment bit the dust. And I believe you have to keep improving as a club and as a team. And we're definitely doing that. So much talk on social media just now about Joe Bryan having a terrible game. And, you know, his cross for Jaffet to score was terrible, wasn't it? You know, it should have ended up in the stands, shouldn't it? A lot of talk also about suspensions and injuries and confusion about who can play next week. I read somewhere that we could have Harding and Wallace as our centre-backs. Harding and Wallace. That partnership sounds a bit like an old bag shoe shop, doesn't it, Nick? I thought it was refreshing to have co-commentator Chris Ulawemo up to date with Millwall in the 24-25 season and he obviously knew the championship well. Normally we get lazy stereotyping from these guys. Shit like, you know, we know how Millwall are going to play with a long ball and dangerous from set pieces. But the old jock on this occasion knew his stuff. Yep, a draw not too bad and brings people back down to earth. The score predictions in our group were quite silly, really. 3-0 this and 4-0 that. When Millwall beat teams in the top six, you just know we won't follow up with wins against teams in the bottom six. That's Millwall all over. So there we fucking are. Hey, Nick. Glenn here. Um, I, I, I heard about maybe sending something in about yesterday's game because if I'm, if I'm totally honest... I really couldn't muster any sort of emotion. There was no anger or disappointment. It was just dull and it played out to a, you know, an inevitable draw. And I, I never really felt like we were actually going to score a second goal. And I came away just feeling very numb about it, if I'm totally honest with you. Um, but uh, and I'll, 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 I'll reference Chat with Chaps here because it, it triggered a thought in my mind, which... Um, which is right, and I think he, he, he nailed it on the head here, where, um, you know, introducing a player of Langstaff's quality right at the end of the game, it is, it, it's an Ian Holloway roll of the dice, right? There, there is no strategy involved. There's no, you know, it's a tactical change, really, because you've got nothing else to do. I am very grateful to Neil Harris for everything he's done for the club, and I really rate the guy, and I think he's a top, top person, um, but I'm starting to get a bit tired with this um, performative substitutions that he's making to say, oh, look, you know, look how limited my squad is. 
I think Langstaff and I think Ivanovic are very good players. And I think I've mentioned before that I think Ivanovic reminds me very much of Richard Sadley. And I think he's got huge potential. And, you know, when we think that Neil Harris made Casper Denor and Romain Essay sit out of the squad for a lot of last season when he was in charge, you know, he got good results, um, but, but playing a very pragmatic style. I'm just really worried that we're going to miss an opportunity to see the best of these players in a Millwall shirt and they're going to go and I think Amaku is going to go and I think that's going to be a real shame because I think Amaku will go on somewhere else and he will be a very good player at championship level and I just wonder if if really Harris for everything he's done and for the success he's achieved like this squad I think is is exceeding his um his tactical ability and so he has one way of playing which which he you know he, he's definitely evolved I'm not I'm not saying he's just the one-dimensional manager he was before but I just don't think he knows how to bring the best out of these players and I, I really do think that Langstaff and Ivanovic uh, and Amaku for that matter are players of huge quality and he should be getting a tune out of them and he isn't and that makes me worried that maybe he's just not up to that task I'm also getting very tired of listening to, you know, the, the competition between him and Gallon and talking about getting players in in January. It, it's just Teflon shouldering the responsibility onto someone else who, you know, is doing the best they can. And actually, if you look at the signings we've made since Gallon came in, I think they're better players than we've had for a long time. So actually, I, I think Gallon, if anything, has, has, has earned time with me and earned a lot of respect. And I think he'll do really well. Um Harris also has that, but he's starting to he's starting to come across a little bit uh, like he's looking for excuses, and that's not a Neil Harris that I remember. Um, so anyway, that, that's a point of view I just wanted to share. I don't really have much to say about the game. It just was a, a, a non-event in my opinion. Should have had Ivanovic on. Should have had Langstaff on at least twenty five minutes before the end because you know it was clear that the the attacking players that we had on the pitch weren't going to create any sort of um, major clear cut chances or put the ball in the net. Um, anyway, that's it. My Sunday evening moan uh, out of the way, and looking forward to the next game. Come on, you lines. Hello, Nick. It's uh, Barnes here. Thought I'd send you a message. Um, I really do believe that that was two points. Uh, Find away today. I think they were there for the taking, um, and yeah, I think I think if we really would have gone for it, I think we would have won the game quite comfortably. I think I think it's probably going to be a bit of a theme on your show tonight that there's players out there that we supporters think shouldn't be playing, and I think personally, you know, as much as you know, Bradshaw has been a great servant to our club. That, you know, he should be players. You know, should be playing players that have got us through this sticky patch before after, after the Orient game, and they haven't been playing. And you know, I think that they owe kind of owe that. You know, players at Langstaff come in and did a job, and you know, the big Serb, and you know, I, I, I'm really struggling to understand why he's not playing that players. You know, you know, if we keep Bradshaw on to help those strikers, maybe you know. Brilliant, you know, what a great pro he has been. But, you know, we should be putting that Oxford to the sword today because, you know, they were in a serious trouble. You could tell, you know, we scored one goal and they they wanted the races. Nowhere near. And they were there for the taking. Get a second goal. It could have been three or four, but we didn't. And no disrespect to what, you know, you could see Coburn at half time, you know, before that limping just to go to the celebration. I was like, he's coming off second half. And I was dreading what was going to happen, and it did, you know. And I hate to, you know, slag off brothers, and he's been a great servant to the club. But we should be players, playing P players that are going to be there next year and, you know, years to come, hopefully. But, you know, it's frustrating because we should have won that game comfortably today, and we didn't. And you know, the left back situation for me is a massive problem. And you know, Brian for me, you know, he gave the ball away in the first few minutes. The first half, you know, holds his hands up. Fair enough, you make a mistake, but Jesus, that's an easy pass in my eyes, and he put Honeyman in a lot of trouble there, and he shouldn't be in that situation. He's a better player than that. Does he care? I don't know. I'm really frustrated with it, and he didn't give anything today. And the goal, I was screaming at TV, going, "You're overloaded! You're overloaded on the left hand side. Look behind you! Look behind you!" And he didn't. 
you know, and then you could see Savile and all the defenders were screaming and get closer to him, stop the shot. But, you know, he didn't. And for me, McNamara is a better defender. If you want to lock up for the second half, lock up. Bring on McNamara. He's a better defender. You know, maybe not so good going forward, but still, seriously, lock it. Lock that position in because they bought on Phillips and that was where they were looking to get down that side. And he got a book in after that. And, yeah, it's frustrating because that game, we should have won that game today. You know, Hutch went off. We've you know we've lost that Tanganga for the you know commentary game, and we've lost Leonard as well. So we've got a lot of switching around. But I thought Murray come on, did a decent job, no, no problem there. You know he needs to step up, and maybe Harden come in as well. But you know, I think a lot of frustration there with the team he's playing. You know, being the you know. Coburn was having a right old battle with a big centre half today, and I thought, you know, the sir, bring him in. You know, why not? It's the second half, just have a good go, get him in there, and just see what it's like to play against a big old centre half. And you know, he had a right battle, Coburn. You know, he come off worse, unfortunately, and I don't know. Hopefully, the ankle injury is not too bad, but you know, it, it, it's a frustrating. But that shows how far we've come, where we are now, and we we should be beating teams at like Oxford. No disrespect, but. Really, you know, if we had better forwards on that pitch, you know, sec- second half when, you know, they bring in on all their forwards, I'd have put SA on, I'd have put Marco on and just just keep pumping the ball long and just go long. Just use your pace getting behind them because they're pushing forward. They're going to be caught on the on the counter. And that's what we should have done in my eyes. But, you know, I'm not a football manager. i just there supporting my team. But you really felt points dropped today. And we are getting in great positions and things like that, as, as Harry said in his, his post-match. But really, I'm disappointed. I think a lot of fans are, and I think you're going to get a lot of calls saying for the same thing. Brian shouldn't be in that team, and you know, nor should Bradders. He runs, and he runs, and he runs. But for me, when he actually gets in a position, if he gets the chance, he's too knackered because he's bloody running so much. But, you know, what do we know? We still love our club, and we still support him to the end, but he's... It's frustrating. It really is a frustrating day. And I think we really, <sighs> defensively, I'm worried next week. But, you know, players, you know, there to come in the team and hopefully do a job. But today was a big, big miss today. And I think it shows how far, you know, I keep saying far as we've come because we weren't this place last year and now we are. But we should be putting teams like that to the sword. But, yeah, it's frustrating when you look at the bench. You know, looking at, you know, the game against Portsmouth, Brad had started, so I just don't get it. I really don't. And, you know, I love Arista bits and what he's done for our club. And, uh, you know, he's a phenomenal, you know, manager and brilliant. But today, he got it wrong, personally. And we go again Saturday. We beat Frank Lampard's commentary, hopefully. And we got the got the old fella coming back. wonder how that's going to go. But anyway, who cares? Um, points dropped. We're still on an unbeaten run, but I think it's just dis- kind of disappointing. It really is. But there you go. Anyway, mate, have a lovely weekend. Uh, speak soon. Hey, Joe from Chicago here. Very frustrated as it's very cold here. It's like 16 degrees Fahrenheit. Not sure what that means in y'all's terms. But one irritating result at Oxford First, Tanganga gets the yellow that suspends him for the next match in the second minute. Ridiculous. Just not smart play. Hutch is injured. It looked like Coburn had a little knock. We're so screwed at center back. I'm genuinely terrified. I mean, Murray Wallace, Wes Harding, even Sean Hutchinson. Imagine any of them going against Haji Wright or those guys at Coventry is not good. Uh Hopefully they don't play well because Joe Edwards is going to cry about it afterwards. But yeah, uh, irritating result, that goal from Gooderum, which weird name, really weird name. But uh, that was a gorgeous goal from him. Love Tanganga's goal. Get Joe Bryan out of my team. Get Joe Bryan out of my team. Get Joe Bryan out of my team. Yes, he made one good pass on the Tanganga goal, but he is a net negative. He, he just is. The, the money he's being paid, he... Yeah, he raises the ceiling a little bit, but he lowers the floor so much. Like, he makes so many boneheaded mistakes. Give me McNamara. Give me a different left-footed player. Because Joe Bryan plays like an 18-year-old, and he's 31. 
Anyways, hope you're well. What a frustrating one. I'll take a point on the road, but yikes. Big thank you, Joe and uh, Banksy at Barnsey. Or Banksy? Barnsey. Big thank you, Joe, Barnsey, and before them to Rob Woodford. Um, minus 16 Fahrenheit is about minus 8 centigrade, Joe. So, yeah, put your put your thermals on out there, mate. A lot of mention between all the boys of, of um, Joe Bryant. Um, he does divide opinion. I, I, I was thinking, um, well, I thought a few times <laughs> across this season, but particularly yesterday, I'm trying to think of equivalent um, players to, to Joe Bryan. And coincidentally, they mentioned at half-time that Chris Hackett, old Millwall player, Chris Hackett, Northampton, he went on to, didn't he? He's coaching at Oxford. And same with Scott Malone, I suppose. These are players, or were players, that were good going forwards, left backs, you know, was that an old money? Possibly even left-sided midfielder, but pretty good going forwards. I'd include Hackett in that, in that category, certainly Scott Malone. Um, but not so good on the old defensive side of things. Um, now, Joe Bryan um, just probably doesn't do enough going forwards. I mean, I think Rob mentioned it was his uh, corner that found Tanganga at the far post. So, you know, that that is the truth. Um, but whether there's enough from him over the course of, of um, 90, whether anyone else can deliver a long corner to the far post, I don't know. I mean, I've seen Jules Savile take a couple. I can't believe there's no one else that can't take a corner at the club. Um, and I, I don't see enough in terms of our dead ball situations. The flight of the ball from Joe Bryan don't seem to have the same um, venom or sting that um, I, I presume that Neil Harris is, is choosing him for. I, I don't know. Certainly in defence, um, when he's on it, when, he's, when he cares or gives the impression of caring, he's not a bad defender. He's played at a high level. Um, but he just doesn't seem to, he seems to drift through games, listeners. Um, and I'm not particularly, you know, keen on a, a kind of a, a lynch mob for, for Joe Bryan. I, I personally would choose Danny Mack for the reasons that all of the boys have, have, have mentioned and others through the show. Um, I just like his defensive qualities and his commitment to the Millwall calls. I think that's, that's the thing. Um, but otherwise, yeah, um, I think everyone's saying... Similar things. I will go back to Rob, if I may, listeners. Um, and I, I agree with you, Rob. Uh, Oxford away. I mean, there's a lot of talk on how we should be winning though, these kinds of games. We are not Real Madrid, dear listeners. Um, Oxford away to me, and no matter how poor a side they may or may not be, they weren't playing that badly. Maybe we allowed them in the second half. They certainly had a few moments, some of which possibly were self-inflicted by us. I don't know. Um, so first half they had moments and second half not so many moments but they had their little little flashes and the way that the uh, forwards scored their goal implied they weren't as bad a side as everyone's cracking them up to be to me um, what they do lack I think and like you know gold dust everywhere is the cutting edge um, dangerous forwards but I think in possession they weren't a bad side they certainly improved things from their perspective in the second half so um, I do think there's a certain, um, you know, I don't know, what's the word? Uh, may, maybe we ought to be a little bit more down to earth. I'm just looking at the notes I made as, as uh, Rob was talking there. So a big thank you to, to Rob Woodford, to Barnsley, and then to, to Chicago Joe. I'm going to play the show out now with two messages, listeners. Um, Rob Abbott and then a succession of the, the, the psychiatrist chair that is Bobby T. Big thank you to Bobby. Big thank you to Rob and everyone for sending in their material for this show. I'm going to play out now with the boys. Um, until the next edition of Akhtung Mill, which will probably be after the Coventry game next week, the return of Joe Edwards with uh, Frank Lampard. Um, let's hope for a big den occasion and that we get three points there. But until then, dear listeners, next weekend, from me, Nick Hart, it's a Riva Dirty Millwall, and bye for now. Morning, Nick. Rob Abbott here from Dublin. Well, that was very, very frustrating, and that's certainly two points dropped, in my opinion. Uh... Yeah, I wasn't surprised with the, the starting 11, to be fair. Uh, for the very first half hour, it was quite a, a dull game of football. Uh, Oxford only, Oxford's only chance came from when Joe Bryan underhit that pass to George Honeyman and the, the guy broke and had a, a long shot dealt well with by uh, Lucas in goal. Uh, but yeah, I think from half an hour onwards, we looked really, really bright. Uh, we were playing really well there for that 15-20 minutes before half-time and, and deservedly took the lead. Uh, 
first corner, I think that we got over the, the first man. We then then convert with a nice bullet header by Tanganga and at half time we're, we're sitting pretty. Oxford were absolute die. Uh, and then, yeah, I think everyone was bemused at half time. Coburn went off. Uh, Bradshaw come on. Uh, obviously, post game, we, we found out after listening to Harris interview that Coburn had a a little strain or something and it's in a protective boot which doesn't sound good uh, but yeah to replace him with Bradshaw will be seen as a sort of a negative substitute because Coburn I thought was playing really well holding the ball up winning a lot of throws deep in their territory uh, to replace him with Bradshaw who's a runner and I don't want to be too critical of Bradshaw he's been a great servant to, to Millwall and I still believe he could do a job at this level but as a bit part player but to throw him on there in 45 minutes uh, when that game is there for us to go and win 2-3-0 uh, surely you throw on a like for like for Coburn and, and throw the big serve up front or even Langstaff's been with us now for five months and early doors Harris talked about how he's got to learn the off-ball side of the plan for Millwall but surely he's learnt that and I've been really impressed with Langstaff on and off the ball uh, whenever he's got a chance his, his work ethic is brilliant he's a really good footballer uh, and look he's, he's a goal scorer and the goals will come in my opinion if he gets the chance but yeah that's up at half time uh, amused us uh, it certainly backfired because I thought Bradshaw had a very poor game uh, apart from chasing that ball down and winning the corner very late on, uh, he lost the ball a lot. Uh, yeah, and to put it, to put him alongside Honeyman, who Honeyman's got a lot of stick this year because his, his numbers don't add up for playing in that number ten role. He, uh, look, I like Honeyman as well, uh, but he was very, very poor yesterday on and off the ball, uh, and yeah, that was crying out for Langstaff or the big serve. Uh, to go and win that 2 3 nil, We didn't, and it's cost us. Uh, we did get a little bit complacent as well at the back. We didn't clear our lines. We tried to play the ball out, and yeah, look, it's a good finish by their guy, but that is very, very frustrating, and we could look back at that come the end of the year. If we are close to the top six, go, yeah, two points drop. We've just missed out, but is that the difference between uh, the big teams uh and us, uh, they're a bit more ruthless than us and, and they go and kill teams off rather than sitting there protecting something. But look, let's not be too critical. We are nine unbeaten. Uh, we're on the right track. Uh, we got a couple of games. Uh, I think we got Coventry next. Uh, I, I, I'd like to think that we, we could beat Coventry, especially at home, albeit we're going to have a, a makeshift back line by the sounds of it. Uh, Tanganga suspended and I, Hutch maybe not good, but look, I think we have to move Ryan Leonard central if that's the case, just for his pace alongside Murray Wallace. Uh, but yeah, Coventry, big one. If we can win that, 10 unbeaten, we're still on the up. Uh, yeah, I'm always looking up the table. Looks like the top three are going to break through and then uh, there'll be the big playoff chase. And yeah, can we just keep staying in the middle of the... Uh, the pack in the peloton and it's a long long season there's a long long way to go uh, and yeah can we hang on uh, and let's hope that we we don't fall off the back and end up sliding down the league uh, we're not going to get relegated this year uh, we're, we're too good for that in my opinion uh, but yeah frustrating annoying and uh, yeah I think Neil Harris is half-time sub cost us there and I'll also uh, mentioned that we didn't actually make another sub in the second half apart from the injury to Hutch when I think the game was crying out. Like I said, even bring Honeyman off after 60 minutes and throw on the big serve or Langstaff to, to do something different and try and win that game 2-3-0. But this is what it is. Hope you're well. I've rambled on a lot there and uh, chat with you soon. Nico, what are they saying in the old Oxford Cassim Stadium? In the old Oxford University. So I by the other night I deleted my message for Portsmouth because shit show, no no one fucking lights us, whatever, that right? bollocks. Tim Pot fucking club, Portsmouth cunts. Was it the old bill? Was it National Whale? Was it Port oh it gives a fuck? Out of my system now. Onto the old Oxford Stadium now. Here, thanks to you, Nick Hart, And the last time I came to Cassim Stadium, Steve Morrison 
got the volley about five or six years ago. And the honey and bag got the winner. But today, on paper, should be beating these Oxford mugs, really. There's no one really to be watched. Now, my one and Bachelor, if they're on the team today, I will fume. Should be a 3 or 4 and it'll, it'll win. But I find out what we're saying, Nick Hart. In Oxford, loss. Trying to find the Maggies. Bye for now. No. Nick Hart, Bobby T here. And I don't know where to start. If you want me to speak calm, I just got to Eleven Castle now. Um, the game finished at half two. The nightmare getting out of fucking Tim Pot Oxford. I thought Portsmouth was, I thought Portsmouth was bad. But Oxford, they shouldn't even be in the championship. They don't deserve it. They're shit. One shot on target. Even one of their fans said they didn't deserve that. And I'm absolutely fucking fuming. And I love Harris to bits. And I'm not saying I'm going to say out now. But for me, fucking Bradshaw. I don't care, Harris, if you're listening right here. The longer you go more onto this club and you stay at the club, Millwall, our lovely Millwall, your Millwall, apparently Mr Millwall, will not progress. I'm very sorry. That's all I'm fucking saying, basically. I'm fucking fuming, mate. I mean, Bradshaw, again, I, I keep saying it. I mean, but, oh, how the fuck is he starting on the second half? And Paul Langstaff and Mahilo. And don't get me started on, on that Coburn guy, um, Coburn, the young guy and all injury fucking prone. Sick fucking no all the time. Just get his muscles out of the game. Um, Hanneman don't do it for me. Poor game. And, and then Harris's reaction. Killer instinct. We should have been out of sight. But the bottom line is we, were, we weren't fucking out of sight, were we? You just saw that game coming. One nil up, typical Millwall, only shot on target. It feels like a knockout punch blow. I am fucking upset, man, Nick Hart. Nick Hart, Bobby T here again. Hold on, Joe Bryan. And now Katanka's out. And now Mike Wallace is playing next week. Hart is out too old. But Joe Bryan, fancy, fancy kicking, fancy in the bat and all that. Danny Mac should have started. I'm sick of that flat white fucking coffee if he's fucking hearing me. Oh my god. And as is for me, man of the match, and Tatanga. And I'm not going to get on the Starboy's. Um, hello, Bobby T here again. Sorry, Nick. Oh, and again, Starboy, I won't want to say. He's just trying to want too much flicks. It comes off here, but not in our fucking own area. Oh, I'm just I'm on a rant at Elephant Castle now. People say two points drop, one point gain. Do you know what? It feels like it's a fucking defeat. I'm just so upset. I thought Porsche were bad, but this game here did not deserve to... Well, I'm talking like we've lost the game, but it feels like we lost the game. Should have won that out of sight. And then Langstaff, two minutes. Insult to fucking Langstaff, mate. Fucking insult. Bobby here too, once again, Nick Hart. And everyone's looking at me like I'm fucking mad at the castle. I'm not mad, I'm passionate. On the train home now. Got an, oh, hold on. No, Arthur Oxford at the ground. No buses, nothing. No cabs, all no, police. Didn't want to know. It's only when Millwall went town. Shocking to get home. Should have been home at 4 o'clock, 4.30. I'm, anyway, I can go on till the cars come home. I'm Millwall till I die. I'm fuming. And Bradshaw, you should not have come on. Poor Mahilo, poor Langstaff. Even a Mako on the wing. We could have... Oxford, oh, anyway, bye for now. Bobby T signing off. Bobby T here, Nick Hart. I'll end it on one thing, yeah. Love Harris to bits. I'm not saying Harris out, but I'm telling you now, Harris, it's on you today. It's your fault for not changing it and going for the kill and killing them. They were there for the taking and we and you fucked up. Bye for now. On to commentary, your Lampard's cunt. Nick Hart podcast, great. Bobby T, not fucking happy tonight. Bye for now. Good morning, Nick Hart, Bobby T here. After the day of Oxford, I just want to give you my analysis of, of not just the game, but Neil Harris is the legend. And last night, my rant about out and him being at the club are not going to progress. But the booze yesterday, and I just heard his analysis after the game about Killer Instinct, didn't like the booing. And I just want to say as a fan base, like every fan is in or out about Harris. And I just want to let you know, we're not booing him as a legend. And I don't like his words, or I don't like the booing of the fans. At nine unbeaten, ten unbeaten. I get that. Unbeaten's fine. It's the way we played and the way we can't kill teams off. That's what the fans are booing. We're booing the tactics. We're not booing 
the legend of himself, Baboon, how he done his substitutions. We love him as a, as Neil Harris. We always will, always will do. But my point is, him to shine away but or reality check. We wanna we wanna be better than Millwall, beat teams, finish teams off. And I'm happy with the ten and nine unbeaten, but it's the tactics and subs and playing your mates. That's all. Otherwise on the commentary, no defence. Just wanted to let you know. Mill Mill till I die, great podcast. And that's my analysis for yesterday's game. Should have at a sub, but we didn't. So you know, that's the whole point. Bringing players who apparently aren't ready. Play the youngsters. Bye for now, Bobby T. Podcast is part of the Sports Social Podcast Network.